We're back with audio and we're off to some mechanism review now. As promised, we're going to do a conjugate addition. We have in our, our midst right here a strong base, a lone pair, and it's an anion. This H has a pKa of 10. It is alpha to two carbonyls. Lone pair, hmm, I thought I switched colors. Lone pair grabs H, dump the lone pair onto the alpha position, right on the carbon there. Okay, what are we gonna get? There's a big chunk of this molecule that doesn't change. Let's circle it. This chunk doesn't look like it changes. That should save us a little time. And what we get here is a ethyl group attached to a carbon that's got a lone pair and a minus. CO2R prime. R prime equals isopropyl. And saves us a little more time. And what else we have? We have a little uh, R group, which I will recolor dark R. This is a 1,4 nucleophile candidate because it is a resonance, extensively resonance stabilized anion. Uh, it will react in a 1,4 fashion with alpha, beta, unsaturated aldehydes, ketones, esters, whatever you got over here. Here's the one for addition. I hope you're getting the idea. You're going to see at least a few of those on Wednesday. You attack way down there. This resonates towards the carbonyl and you get an O minus. And what do we have when we're done? Well, the blue piece has an ethyl CO2R prime and an R with a new bond to a carbon that has a propyl off of it. We attacked the carbon that has the propyl off of it, goes to another carbon that has an ethyl off of it and a double bond to a C that now has an O minus. That is the conjugate base of an aldehyde. This is the enolate of the aldehyde. We just need to give it a proton to get it to be aldehyde again. And the best proton we have is H-O-E-T, the solvent. And we resonate here to make the aldehyde. Pi protonates. And you're done. Not a major league mechanism. You had to spot the one four addition. The new bond was to this carbon here in this molecule here. And that was beta to this aldehyde here. And over here, we have an enamine. That's another candidate for one four addition. And Enamines react by resonating in first. This is their nature as nucleophiles. They resonate towards the ene of their name. And the ene is the nucleophile. And it resonates all the way up to the fourth position here. It's another 1-4 addition. We saw two of them here. This is a 1-4 here. And we're doing another 1-4 here. And the intermediate we get, hmm, and we need to do a hydrolysis over here. This is going to be a wide mechanism. Let's see. Let me do a green arrow. What we have is a cyclohexane. And we have an ET here and a propyl up here and ET here. 
And we don't have a carbonyl anymore. We have an enolate. We know what's going to happen to that just based on our previous example. And we have an isopropenyl group. And we have our new bond to this position right here. And what's it look like? Well, it's off of a ring size six again. And let's draw it in black. The attacking carbon is one away from a carbon that's bonded to a nitrogen. So this is the attacking carbon hits here. One away from a carbon that has a double bond to nitrogen now. And a plus charge. You verify you have CH2 once, twice, three times, once, twice, three times. There's the new bond. Yeah, I didn't make that better, did I? Put a dot there. There we go. And how do we get home? Well, we're going to have to take advantage of red first. Red first. I'm at the top of my screen. I'm going to go blue second as usual. And the acid base to protonate your alpha position here. Notice there's an H on here. Need to get that H on there. That will be the first step from the ethanol. Keeping it consistent with the one we just did. H-O-E-T will be first. Resonate those electrons to get your carbonyl back. Pi picks up a proton. And you have ETO minus. And we're going to have to do a hydrolysis. Um, it doesn't look like it, but this is a masked aldehyde. It's, if you do a hydrolysis, you get a carbonyl here. And the end's going to get an H. Or if there's extra protons around, two H's. Eh, maybe you could argue there should only be one H here. It's OK. We'll get there. So hydrolysis, you need to get a carbonyl there. Well, clearly, you need an oxygen there. Water is your attacker here. H2O. I know it's a step two. Maybe we should wait. The red's happening first. That takes care of step one. Yeah, I think I'm going to allow this one. This will come in after the after the one four addition, and that'll generate this. And I believe what we can do now save ourselves a heck of a lot of drawing for a little bit is circle this whole deal, maybe in a different color. Circle this whole deal here. because I don't see it changing for a, quite a while. R prime. I hope I didn't have another R prime here, but I didn't on this question, so we're good. And what are we going to have? We're going to have R prime uh, attached to a carbon. OK, so that's the red bond. And the carbon here is going to have a C that has an oxonium on it. Still has an N on it. And we're here. Oh, don't forget oxonium. I said the word oxonium. I didn't put the charge here, did I? And we're going to have to get to a carbonyl. We might have saved ourselves a step, deprotonating in a third step, but we didn't do that. So let's move on. Now you have uh, sulfuric acid present and sulfate ion. Uh, probably would be protonating your nitrogen right now. If you have a strong acid around and nitrogen, that's going to be a very fast reaction. 
that's going to create sulfate ion, which would then take the H off your oxonium. And you got you got to do the protonation before you can do the deprotonation because you need the base. So first and second. We're getting there. We're getting there. We got our ring here. N has H and methyl now. And our and we have OH up here. I think we're ready to finish this thing off. And get the product up here. We need to do what looks like an elimination, which also coincidentally looks like a tautomerization. We're going to use a base to grab the H. And this is going to protonate the nitrogen, the conjugate acid, protonate the nitrogen so it leaves as a better leaving group. And here it comes. There we are. You can do that with one set of arrows. It looks like an E2 to me with a protonation as the leaving group leaves. And there you go. You're going to have nitrogen with two H's on it, a methyl. All we need to do now is to generate an amine. And the amine will be secondary. And the amine has two choices, which is going to answer my student's next question. We're going to generate a secondary amine right here using hydroxide. Amines love reacting with aldehydes and ketones. This molecule possesses a ketone on the left. So we're going to make an enamine over there. And it also possesses an aldehyde on the right. It will make an enamine over there. So let's do that. Acid base first, and then we'll make a carbon copy of the resulting product. So new set of arrows, purple. Hydroxide is going to take a proton from my ammonium ion and generate a nitrogen nucleophile. And sadly, we got to draw the whole thing out. Mm -hmm. So let's do that. Mm, can you remember this, all this stuff? Let's see. Ethyl, propyl, ethyl. Not in red, though. You got a carbonyl, ethyl, propyl, ethyl. What else you got on here? Isopropenyl. And our dude over here. Hmm. And our dude. I don't even know what our dude looks like. He's got uh, one, two, three, four carbons, then the amine. One, two, three, four carbons. One, two, three, four. And then the amine. Methyl, lone pair. And what else we got on there? One, two, three bonds. It's got an H still. And we still haven't finished with the aldehyde up here off the carbon attached to the ring. And we're going to need two copies of that. Not fair, I know. And on the one on the left, we're going to attack the ketone. I lost my H. I didn't copy it, that's why. Step one, nucleophilic attack on an, a ketone. Resonate up. Step one over here, nucleophilic attack on an aldehyde. Resonate up. Step two. The O lone pair the, in the O minus that you just generated 
will grab an H that it can't reach from the ammonium ion that you just made. Yes, verify to yourself you made an ammonium ion. The red arrows made a fourth bond to nitrogen. And you have to tell me you know that, that N that's on a car a adjacent to the carbon with the oxygen cannot reach it. You got to throw that word intermole. And I really prefer it right on the arrow where the intermole part's happening. So that blue, both blue arrows. And we're going to get something that looks a lot like our products. It's going to look like this one and this one. Let's draw what we get. Yeah, we got to be patient with these bigger molecules, don't we? You got purple. You got your cyclohexane. Ethyl, propyl, ethyl. And on this one, we didn't do anything over here with the aldehyde, but we have three CH2s, one CH2, two CH2s, three CH2s, then an N that still has a methyl and that's attached to this carbon here. That carbon also has a bond to OH here. Nitrogen with lone pair, very important. So that's that. And I think I missed the isopropylidine, which is cool because I'm getting tired of drawing it anyway. Rx. You can even sneak it up here if you want. X. That's a Y. Eh, sigh. Try my best to make an X. There we go. Uh, same story down here, but we made the bond in a ring over here. Oh, this one, this one, this one, this one. Here's our RY. There's the Y. Looks like an X. <laughs> Still learning my new pen. It is better. I, I'm, I'm just, I need to adjust. Okay. Uh, so we got our RY. Attached to a C. It's got a bond from C to OH now. And it's got an N that has a methyl still and a lone pair. And the ring size goes CH2 once, twice, three times, and then it connects up there. In both molecules, it's time to get rid of the get rid of the hydroxyl and then make an enamine. So resonate in to make a iminium and resonate in to make an iminium here and a hydroxide. And uh, the one that's hard to draw is over here, purple. And what's gonna go on is start with that cyclohexane. You got your Rx. Ethyl, propyl, ethyl, C goes to aldehyde, CH2 once, twice, three times to N, to a bond, to two bonds, to a plus. And I got to look at my product. That's the one on the right. Double bond towards the isopropenyl group which means you need to grab this H here with hydroxide to make product number, I'm just gonna label them as uh, one and two. This has to go to two. And the hydroxide you made when you booted it off the hydroxide is here. And you just do acid base and resonance to get to two. And over here, we're going to finish this and get to one. I don't want to go more to the right if I don't have to. 
So we're up here. We got an R Y and double N methyl plus here. And on that one, we need our double bond to be where? Probably towards the R Y. And where, where am I? I gotta be careful. R Y is here and I need the double bond into there. So right here, this H. We're gonna to go to product number one by grabbing this H with hydroxide. You made hydroxide right here. No, I meant I didn't want to put it to the right. Got to listen to myself. Plus H O minus. Grab H, resonate towards the iminium lone pair on N, and you've made product one. And that was a nice long segment. It's like old times. And we'll come back for more.